Well, hey, Pastor Tim here with my wife, Jaya. And on Monday night, we had our first equip night of the semester. It was an amazing night. We talked about singleness and dating. We had dinner. We had a panel looking at questions that you brought to us. And the reality is we didn't have time to get to them all. Mm -hmm. And what we said was on Monday night, hey, we want this to be a start of a conversation, not the end of one. And so this little video is part of continuing that conversation. And one common thread of question came through that was around this idea that we want to address now, which is who to date? Mm -hmm. How do I know to get serious in dating and even pursue that person for marriage? Uh, what am I looking for? And, and we talked about it on Monday night. Obviously, Jesus, like a follower of Jesus, not someone who just attends a service. Mm -hmm. um, someone who's in authentic community, uh, who doesn't just have casual networks of friends, right? Those are a couple things off the top. We already covered that, so we won't get into that. But we, we talked and said like, hey, we know couples who are godly and flourishing, who love the same things. Like both of them are athletes and nutrition freaks, right? We know people like that and they're godly and they're flourishing and they have a lot in common. But we also know couples who don't like the same things. And in fact, they're kind of fun to hang out with because they kind of go back and forth mm -hmm. and pick at each other and they have very different personalities. And yet they're godly mm -hmm. and flourishing in their marriage years later. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about what's the what's the common thread beneath those sort of surface level chemistry things that we typically look for and who to date, who to marry. What's mm -hmm. the thread beneath those things that helps maintain a godly flourishing relationship. And we talked about humility and teachability. Mm -hmm. And that comes right out of Philippians 2 and scripture. Uh, and it talks about, hey, in humility, consider others more than you do yourselves. Uh, look out for the interest of others more than you look out for your own interests. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so countercultural to the way we date, isn't it? I mean, even when we think about who to date, we're looking out for our own interests. We got a list. We got an algorithm set up of like all the things that we're looking for of our own interests. And we do, we want them to be adventurous because we're adventurous. We want them to, to like certain types of food because that's what we like. We want them to have this disposition because that's the disposition we have. But in reality, what you're doing is you're looking for yourself, not another person. And you don't need yourself in a dating relationship or in marriage. You need someone to compliment you. Right. And that's where humility comes in. You begin to look for uh, other people's interests. You begin to look out for them in humility. And that breeds teachability. And I think that's what you and I experienced in our relationship. Yeah, I would say, I mean, when we were dating, I mean, we have a lot of similarities, but we had a lot of differences. So yeah. one difference was um, I mean, I'm Indian. So Tim had never really eaten Indian food. So he he would always talk about how. He's like, I don't think I would have realized how much I liked Indian food had we not dated. And like, sure. yeah. <laughs> um, so I think things like that, where I think we had similarities. We both really liked the outdoors and like hiking and, you know, watching movies or reading certain books and things like that. But there were a lot of differences. Um, like Tim's really into like watching football, which is great. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I like sports. I probably can't like watch it for super long, but <laughs> I know like that's like his his interest. So it's something I, I've learned, you know, go Cowboys. Mm, That's a big amen. thing for us. <laughs> so just knowing there are, there are similarities, but there's differences that you get to learn from each other. So just yeah. knowing that God created us all different. And so we think we want the same, someone that's just like us, but we actually want something. We need something that's different than us. And honestly, it challenges us to be, you know, thankful for that. God's created us all different. So I think in that way, we're able to yeah. see God's design, how we're all made different. But then also, um, I think we really enjoyed seeing, um, being able to practice like what repentance looked like in our, yeah. in our relationship of knowing we weren't perfect. And so I think seeing that in each other of like being willing to, to step out and being willing to, um, recognize the Im the imperfect parts of our character just because that's going to, when you get married, you're definitely going to see those things yeah. come out. The blemishes of your character will come out and mm -hmm. uh, that you didn't even know were there. And so it's really good that I feel like we tried to practice that when we were dating. It wasn't always perfect, but I think you definitely, on. yeah. And that continues in marriage anyway. So you, that's something you want to practice even yeah. you know, be before you get married or someone you're dating or just your you know community around you. I think it's really important. Yeah. And it all, all comes back to that idea of humility, right? Like our ability to connect with each other, for you to 
learn about sports, you know, that you didn't really love before. I mean, one of the things we did when we were dating is Jaya for my birthday, we went to tour Cowboys Stadium and we threw touchdown passes. Which I love. I love, she I loved love to play sports. She loved did she did love it. Yes. It probably wouldn't have been at the top of your list of like outings yes. uh, to do bucket list items before you die, right? But you you looked for my interests, like Philippians 2, and you're like, hey, I want to learn about this. But it's not just one-sided. I began to look out for your interest, and I didn't like to run, and you love to run. That's your safe haven. And so I was like, hey, let's go for a run. I want to learn about that. And it all comes out of this idea of humility and teachability. And those are sort of like the commonality type pieces. And what's fun about dating, and that was what was so fun, Mm -hmm. I do say, I don't know what my life would be like without Indian food. (laughs) I don't. I love Indian food. But I did. it wouldn't have, listen, it wouldn't have been on my list of characteristics to look for in a wife. Is somebody who made Indian food or like, I didn't even know that I liked that. But that was the, the amazing part of looking out for someone else's interests, not my own. Humility that leads to teachability is now I love Indian food. And that's, that's I have somebody who compliments me, not someone who is me mm-hmm. in a relationship. And, and those are like the commonality things. But as Jaya talked about, it goes deeper than that to things like repentance. And that's mm-hmm. sourced from a humility and a teachability. That's the thread. And we see those couples who are very different. They fight, but they fight clean. And they repent and they practice that repentance in their life. And, and they don't hold on to things so tightly with the closed fist. They open empty hands mm-hmm. and say, hey, I'm imperfect. These are areas of my life where I'm still striving to follow Jesus, to um, confess and looking at scripture. I'm not done yet. I'm not a finished product yet. And so those kind of things as well, just like the Indian food or sports or other commonalities that are fun to learn about in the other person that's sourced from humility. Also something like repentance, which is the key to marriage, uh, because you will fight. You just need to acknowledge that and you want to fight clean. And that starts with repentance and that's sourced in humility. So how do you know who to date? you look for humility and teachability. Once you get beyond, of course, they follow Jesus. They're in authentic community. Of course, we have some commonalities in chemistry, but beyond all that, you want to see this common thread in their life of humility and teachability with simple things like Indian food and sports and jogging, but also with the really deep things in life like repentance, confession, looking at God's word, being molded by Jesus and You need to be asking as you're thinking about, should I ask that person out? Should I pursue this person for marriage? We've been dating for six months. Is this serious? Do they have those threads of humility and teachability? And I think that will help you. So, hey, we hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, We hope this is a part of continuing this conversation around singleness and dating. Uh, We love you. We're praying for you. We know it's a difficult landscape. Trust Jesus with your life and with the person you want to date. And uh, he will set your path straight. He will work this out for you. And he'll draw you closer to him in the process. So we love you. Take care.